Welcome to another HSExtra.com high school football playoff video this week. Uh, my name is Joe Serrera. I'm joined by Southeast Guilford Falcons head coach Earl Bates. Coach Bates, thank you for joining us. I'm glad to be here, Joe. You're coming into the playoffs on a five-game winning streak, including uh, two tough wins, two-point win at Northwest and a one-point win over Page. Do you feel like your team has some momentum the way you've been playing? Well, anytime you win, uh, you know, I, I think that's momentum. And, you know, the last two games, like you said, were very close games. And I think our kids showed a lot of resilience I mean, to hang in those games and win those tough games. Mm -hmm. What's your team been doing well during this run? It seems like playing defense is certainly one of those things. You know, defense is our identity. Um, you know, we felt that going into the season that we we're going to be pretty good on defense. And we play real good defense for the most part all year, you know, except for the, the Northern game, which, you know, I, I'm not sure we played bad defense in that game. It was more so uh, offensive turnovers that put us in some bad situations. Mm -hmm. What do your Falcons need to do better to make it a playoff run? Well, you know, East Forsyth is a very explosive team. When you, when you look at their, their, their schedule and their, their games, I mean, they, they've scored a lot of points in um, all their games except for the Reagan game, you know, the mm -hmm. one game that they lost. So for us to be successful, I think that we do have to play good defense and kind of control the clock a little bit, uh, you know, with our offense. You know, we're going to try and run the football and control the clock and move the chains a little bit. And, and not have our defense on the field so much. You've obviously looked at this East Forsyth team and preparing for them, looked at video and huddle and, and whatever other uh, areas where you can get them. What do you see from this Eagles team? Well, defensively, uh, first thing that stands out when I look at them defensively, they fly around. Uh, they've got a lot of guys on defense with very high motors. Uh, they, they like to, you know, fly to the football as a team. And then when you look at him offensively, it all starts with the quarterback. I think he's the leading, you know, of course, he's he's thrown for close to 2,000 yards, I think. And uh, I think he's the leading rusher also. Mm -hmm. And then their slot back, number seven, they move him around quite a bit. He, he's, he's pretty explosive as a receiver. And, you know, he hurts you in the kicking game as well. Who's playing well for your team right now? Who, who are some of the key guys for you? You know, Alex McCollum has been playing at a high level all season. Uh, Cam Williams has, has been playing at a high level. Uh, Jordan Farmer. Um, you know, our, our offensive line has gotten better. Um, you know, we struggled a little bit early on with the offensive line. I think they, they have gotten better each week, and we're going to need them to be real good this week as well. Mm -hmm. you, you had uh, running game is a big part of what your team does. Tyshawn Wall was doing some things early in the season, and he got banged up. Then Elijah Davis came in. How, how is that working out with, with with that with Davis stepping in? It seems like he's really stepped up. You know, uh, Elijah he, he really stepped up in a big role uh, when Tyshawn went down after the Northern game. Uh, he stepped in, and you know he rushed for over a hundred yards for two or three games in a row. Um, and then we got Tyshawn back. We kind of you know alternating the two of them, so it. They, they're different runners. They both do a lot of good things. Uh, hopefully, uh, we're going to have to use both of them this week, and, and hopefully they both can be successful in what they try and do. Is is the situation you've got now a little bit like when you had Jalen Fairley and Darren McQuitty last year where you had two guys who could be the guy, and they, they did bring different things to the table? Yes, you know, it, you know it's, it's similar to that. Um, you know, Tyshawn probably runs a, a little bit. You know, it's hard to compare anybody to Jalen Fairley. He was a great running back. Um, yes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Tyshawn is more of that slasher type guy, uh, like a Fairley. But, and then, you know, ED is what we call him, Elijah. We call him ED. ED is more, you know, he's going to stick it up in there. He's more of a power type uh, running guy. And, you know, he's, he's going to try and move people when they tackle him. So, we, we like what they both bring to the table. And then we put Alex in the backfield. You know, he's such a great blocker for us in the backfield. And, and I do give it to him at times when we need tough yards. So uh, we feel good if we can block him up front. You drew one loss East Forsyth team uh, in the playoffs. And you guys, your only losses were to three teams that are combined 28 and two. I, do you feel like maybe you guys were underseeded a little bit and got, got a little bit of a tough draw here? Well, you know, when, when you look at the 4A bracket, the, the 4A West bracket is it's loaded with good football teams. Yeah, um, it sure is. So, you know, you, you just kind of 
that's the position we're in as a wild card team. I knew mm -hmm. we were going to play a very good football team in the first round. You know, it was a three-way tie in their conference. I think they drew third, I think. Um, so it kind of just put us in the situation where we drew them. But it could have been either one of those teams out of that conference. It would have been a tough football game. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody you've played this season who you would compare this East Forsyth team to? Well, you know, defensively, how they fly around. Uh, when I first looked at them defensively, you know, I, you know, I thought about Northern's kids as far as how they fly to the ball. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, the scheme is a little different, but just as seeing their kids run around, it, it kind of reminded me a little bit of them. You know, offensively, um, you know, we played between, you know, Grimsley and, and, and North Northern were some very good offensive teams that we played. Um, they're a little different. I think they try and run a little more, but the quarterback, he's a guy that will hurt you um, in the passing game as well. So th they're going to present a little different problem for us offensively. You talked about wanting to be, obviously needing to run the ball and wanting to shorten the game a little bit, control the clock a little bit. What else do your Falcons have to do on Friday night over in Kernersville to come back with a victory? But we've got to tackle, um, you know, th those guys, you know, the quarterback, he's a slippery guy. We mm -hmm. have got to contain him and tackle him. And also we, we need some good things to happen in the, in the special team area um, as far as field position. We can't, you know, one thing about us offensively, you know, we'll get pinned deep. We're not a, a team right now that can, you know, drive a, a – very long field, you know, field position type team. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need good things to happen in the kicking game and in the return game to help us with field position. Uh, it should be a great football game Friday night over in Kernersville, Freddie Lewis Stadium. Always a tough place to play, but your guys are ready to go in there and 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 uh, we wish you luck in that game and going forward. All right, thank you, Joe.